What's going on everyone? Welcome. This is the Warehouse Series and today is Discord Sunday. If you are new to the channel, usually I put videos out every other Friday, but I am very busy right now. I started a new job, uh, you know, doing home remodeling, and then I am still cutting because the grass just does not want to start growing or stop growing. So hopefully it's done. And then uh, between my eBay store and then me trying to squeak out a video, it is uh, just not a lot of free time for me to do YouTube videos. So, but I do try to put one out every other uh, Friday, guys. And I do that by going over on Discord and pulling off pictures that people post over there. So if you guys want to support the channel, you could donate or you can help me out by shopping on my eBay store. Uh, guys, join that Discord. That link is in the description below. If you watched one of my older videos and that's an expired link, either go to one of my newer videos and get the link off of there or just message me and I'll get you a new one. Guys, like and comment, interact on my channel and subscribe. I really appreciate everybody who supports my channel because I just passed 7,000 subscribers as the time of filming this video. So very excited about that. And a few weeks ago, I passed over a thousand sales on eBay. Uh, June was one year. So I'm averaging probably around 70 to 80 sales a month, which I'm very happy about. Uh, obviously I'm trying to increase that and try to get this a little bit bigger than what it is. But for the time being, I thoroughly enjoy it. And I appreciate everybody who supports uh, everything I do. So like I said, if you guys are new, I go over on Discord, I pull off pictures that people post over there and I try to help them build a better palette to hopefully get uh, better at their job. Uh, this was just, a, uh, someone took this and I just wanted to throw this up real quick because guys, 26 years in the warehouse, I've seen some very, very ugly palettes. This ranks up in the top three. <laughs> this is one of the most god awful palettes I've ever seen in my life. I don't even know how it's standing up. I don't know how they got to wrap that as they did it it's almost like this was a two-person job all right like he had help doing something that bad so this person posted this on uh, discord and all what i said is it's a per personal preference it's not the end of the world it's just something i always said it's like anytime i have a container that has a box on one side maybe like uh you know your barbecue sauces and stuff like this salad dressings and it's clear on the other side i always like facing the cardboard out like this, like this salad dressing here. I always like facing the cardboard out and and have the uh, clear package and facing in. Personal preference, probably not gonna make a difference. It's just something I always just felt like the bottles were a little lower than the cardboard side. And if I flip it around, I just have that constant mindset that the perimeter of my palette needs to be higher than the inside. I always want cases leaning in, not out. I don't even care if it's a fraction. I, that's just how ridiculous I am. But great looking palette, we got a lot of icings, a lot of bulk items on here. I mean, we kept our uh, heavier, looks like aerosol cans up here. Uh, you know, anytime you see those on the side, usually it's aerosol cans. And I just wanna point something out on the back palette real quick. It's a nice start of your base. Uh, you know, there's a few, like just this corner, I wanna say. So I always tell you guys low corner, I mean a high corner with a low inside is definitely gonna uh, give you that structural palette that you're looking for. So this isn't the end of the world right here. So my next thing in my head is I need, it looks like this is even with the middle. So my next thing is I want a nice long case to tie this in, to tie this corner in the hair. And then the next case I put on top of this is very important because I'm gonna save it to be either level with the case that I just put here or lower than the case I just put here. Because if it's higher, then I'm gonna keep playing catch up with my corner and that's when you get a corner that falls over. All right, it's very important to know that because if I put a case here and I put a lower case here and I get another case that just comes off of this a little bit, remember guys, just a case hanging off a little bit is a form of weight distribution. Uh, how can I explain that a little bit better? But like, almost like right here, I, even though this is minute, but see how this case is hanging off of here? Uh, it, let's picture that a little bit more. You know, it's a form of tying in. And I hope that makes sense. I've talked about it in the past, that just getting the weight distribution coming off the corner is very important. Uh, this one right here, I said to this person, 99%, I love this order except for one thing, and that's the juice upside down. Uh, guys, I am I'm not a fan of liquids being upside down. So after 26 years in the warehouse, the majority of my time was in dairy. And I'd say probably only about a dozen times that this happened to me where I either threw a yogurt cup upside down or cottage cheese or a liquid and it actually started running down the pallet because it was broken open. Guys, these lids crack really easy. Uh, it could be a manufacturer like uh, defect in the, in the product itself that's gonna make it leak. 
uh, you know, or when you, like I said, these ones here, these lids crack so easy. So when you throw it down, you could be cracking the lids and what's the point of selling it? They're not going to buy it. So that's just going to be unsellable product if the lids get cracked. So what I like to do is just keep these upright. Like I said, guys, probably a 1% chance that you put this upside down or even less than a 1% chance that something's going to start rolling out of it. But it's just a, a thing that I like. But other than that, guys, keeping big cases on the corners, very important. Uh, you know, we got our Minute Maid hanging off a little bit. That's a little bit. Uh, I don't like that. Uh, fingers with guys and we got room here remember guys anytime you're driving and your forks are shaking around and maybe this minute made was put in place and it shook off give it a little bump all right just take your hip and put a little bump into it and get it back on the pallet uh, the more square your pallet is the better uh, we're, we did pretty good on this uh, order though it's a very nice looking pallet so let's move on to the next one here uh, this is a very tall pallet. We got bigger boxes. When you get into bigger boxes, you tend to have gaps like this. So we're taking a lot of cube away. Uh, I don't know what's in these fresh boxes if they have lids. It maybe the half lids is it something we could have put one here on its side and, and you know as long as you're not crushing it maybe we could have put one upright next to the eggs just to alleviate some uh gaps and maybe we could have moved this whole column to touch this column and we could have put more down here so uh, i probably would have slid these three cases over to touch these three cases and that would have gave us space here to drop some of these smaller cases down that you see up here we could have had an opportunity to do that uh your pallet's big because of the you know your bigger cases and your uh yes yeah, so you, you turn one up up right here uh, we should have did that here and possibly down here if we would have slid those cases over and it would have saved us some room uh and if this is all one store then i would have definitely utilized the other pallet because this just looks like a really tall pallet unless that's how big they want you to do it but other than that i mean you it's not a bad pallet i like this i like that it's a lot of cases a lot of cases and guys remember if you're in a part of the warehouse like this right here where it's all small cases whatever the bigger cases in that part of the warehouse are need to be on the corner the only thing i would have done differently is my corner would have been facing in because that would have gave us more of a sturdy corner i don't like running the length of the board i like running the width that's my cross and t i talk about so even though these cases are still a little smaller i would have still maybe put them side by side here like you did but i would have tried to get an opportunity to tie something in a little bit to try to tie this corner in now you wrapped along the way but what happens is when you get a bunch of these smaller cases is the back of this pallet becomes a wall all right, it becomes a wall and it becomes a very fallible wall, if that makes any sense. So if we did not wrap this more than likely, this whole entire thing, even though it looks beautiful, is coming down. So when you have a lot of smaller cases, you might have to do this. You might have to wrap as you're selecting. Uh, I, but I would try, I, let me know in the comment section below if you're the person that built this. I'm curious if you made your times on this, because usually with these smaller case orders, uh, like this uh, they're they're harder to build and usually you're not making a uh, good time on them uh but you did a great job guys once i get once again if you're brand new to selecting in dry goods and you get a pallet like this that has a lot of small cases whatever the bigger cases are of that section of the warehouse need to be on the corner and you need to watch my cross and t videos uh to make sure that we keep sticking cases facing in uh this person <laughs> no i don't like slip sheets at all i hate slip sheets i i've came to learn that it is a new thing with with building and if that's what helps you get your times faster then so be it uh and this person's very warranted for his uh slip sheets because his name is the slip king so <laughs> uh, i don't like slip sheets because i on certain things i do uh but on a, a order this big it, to me it's a waste of time now this person has four thousand slip sheets on his jack so they are ready for him to do but if you're a new selector and you're trying to select the pallet this is probably only about a 45 q pallet and if you're trying to select a pallet this size try not to use any slip sheets especially if you do not have them with you handy because you're wasting time looking for sheet i, I see people push product on the floor just to take just to grab a slip sheet don't try to get out of the habit of using slip sheets uh but if you're very if you've been selecting for a year or you've been selecting for a length of time and you're very comfortable with using them to keep using them if that's what's helping you but i don't like that i just don't like them that's all i'm going to say this is a very 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 easy palette to build without slip sheets now once again i'm not knocking the person that does the slip sheets do what you're comfortable with i i just try i think it's a waste of time 
Now, I don't hate this, but I'm going to say don't make it a common thing. So once again, guys, I'm just going to go back to 26 years in the warehouse. I think I've done this a few times uh, in produce. And it looks like these are produce. They might be corn, possibly, or uh, it does look like a produce. Yeah, because there's, yeah, this is, or maybe not. I don't know. Anyhow, I have done this in produce a couple times where I have stacked something that I didn't want to stack on because the cases just suck and I got a quantity of them. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to stack a tower. I'm going to shrink wrap it to the guard of my jack. And then at a later time, whenever I build around it, I'm going to cut the shrink wrap off and let this thing lean up against the rest of my order. I have done this in the past. I just would not make it a habit. Uh, this should be a very rare thing that happens whenever you get a quantity of an item that you just do not like stacking on. All right, guys, these last four pictures is all the same person's order. It's a cereal order. And I just want to walk through with them on this a uh, little bit. Uh, we got our pastas down here. So I don't mind laying pastas on their sides if you have to. Once again, I do like keeping my pastas upright too, but there is nothing wrong with putting pastas on their side, especially when you have a lot of light stuff coming afterwards i consider this light stuff you know a box of cereal and you know it's not jars uh you did a nice job uh except for your middle which we're going to look at in in a, in a little bit here i like your putting your jams your preserves in here we got noodles really low on this palette i wonder why those noodles came so early man there's just it's a it's a big order too I don't like these on their sides. I don't know what they are, but usually these type of boxes, they pop open really easy and they're not uh, very sturdy like the pop tarts and stuff like that. Uh, I probably would have kept them upright. I definitely would have did something different with my front corner up here. Uh, probably even right here. If you would have just stood these two pastas up, it got, remember guys, same as I said on the other picture, when you have a low corner and you have a high inside, your job is to try to correct that as soon as possible, especially low on the pallet. So if you wanted to keep these two cases on their sides, if we would have took these barillas and put them upright, we might have been level with this or even close, and then we could have tied the corner into the middle. Very important that you uh, keep that concept that I need to tie this front, the corner in with the middle and I need to make sure that I'm, I'm focusing on if I have a low corner with a high inside that I need to swap that around and try to even out somewhere so I can start tying things together. I wanna to take a look at your next picture because this shows the middle of your palette, which is not good. Uh, this is very common with newer selectors selecting in the, in the cereal aisles. Uh, I don't know what it is, but watch my Cross and T videos if you have not done so yet. You can find them over on Discord under my top videos. Uh, we love stacking the length of the board this direction. We do not like going in this way for some reason. And as you could see on that picture that we were just looking at, everything is running the length. Well, when you run the length of the wood, you start leaving this in the middle. I promise you, the more cases you have pointing towards the middle of this is gonna close up this gap, and it's also gonna give you a stronger palette. So I want you to start focusing on pointing cases inwards. And remember, with cereals, you can stick them up on their end. You can stick them on their sides. It's not going to hurt them. Same with all this stuff. This, this part of the warehouse you're in right now with the cream of wheat, the Pop-Tarts, uh, pastas, they can go upright. They can go on their sides. You know, they're strong enough cases where you're not going to damage them. So I really want you to start trying to point all your cases inwards. Uh, the sides of your pallets look good. But once again, see, we just love running the length. Like these big long pastas would have been pointing in. Uh, and I also want to say your rice aroni and your Ben's rice that you have on the corner. I don't care if I would have threw these first three and then I got the brillas. I would have took these three rices and I would have took them out of there and I would have dropped the brillas down. The big strong cases, the lower on the pallet, the better. When you have weak cases at the bottom base, and I understand if they came first, and this is why I tell people, I do like the touch once mentality uh, after we establish a base, all right? So believe, like, think about this. If you move, if let's say we touch five cases multiple times down here, just to make sure our base was nice and strong, this is gonna go really quick. I like your, this rice is in a good spot, all right? I don't even mind your jello upright like that. We're not putting a lot of pressure on it. But this rice is in a good spot because it's in the middle. We got nice, big, strong cases on the outside. This I would have got rid of. I would have not had these here. I probably would have stacked them in the middle somewhere, dropped these big, heavy cases down. Uh, 
it, it looks like it turned out all right, but there's cases like the buckle. And remember, guys, just because it looks good on the dock does not mean it's going to be looking good once it gets to the warehouse after it rides on the truck. These cases like the buckle, they like to crush. Uh, yeah, these Ben's Rices, I probably would have had them in the middle somewhere. And that's um, that's my cross and T. But see your four Brillas right here? I would have dropped them down right here. I probably would have put two this direction and took the other two and faced them in towards the middle of this pallet. And then I would have took these Ben's Rices and I would have stacked them straight up. I stack my column straight up the middle with my cross and T and I tie in the corners and it gives me a strong pallet every single time. Other than that, though, like right here, I like what you did. Like, I don't know what these are, but they're probably something, maybe mashed potatoes or whatever. Like, you're not doing bad. Like, I think you're doing pretty good. I, th I think we just need to focus on that cross and T method because it really comes into play with these type of video, uh, with these type of products. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thank you for uh, joining in. And like I said, uh, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Uh, thank you for the people that are and help me get to 7,000. And I'll see you guys next time. Have a great week.